Welcome ladies and gentlemen to marimbology.com episode number one, the variables of tone production. Our flagship episode is dedicated to my good friend Ed Stello, not only the man who got me into percussion in the first place, but the man who got me a working hi-hat ornament for Christmas. Thanks buddy. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have a lot of stuff to cover, not a lot of time to do it. So I apologize if I move a little quickly. If you would like to talk about something in more detail, please stop by the website, marimbology.com, or leave a comment. Here we go. Here are the basic things that affect the tone of the marimba. The room, the marimba itself, where the bar is struck, how the bar is struck, what is striking the bar, and the grip used on the mallet. So number one, the room. Basically our variables here are the size of the room, the shape, the position of the listener, and the position of the marimbist in relation to the listener, and the temperature. Now these first three things, they affect the reverb and the overtone perception. And the reverb is something that's very obvious even to people who aren't musicians. If I record me playing something in a practice room, and I record me playing something in a huge concert hall, and I play them for my grandma, she's going to tell a very, very noticeable difference between the two. So that's huge. As far as the overtone perception, if you're playing something in a practice room, you're going to hear a lot more of the higher pitch overtones and a lot more of the attack on each note. Whereas if you're in a big hall, a lot of that kind of goes away. You don't, it's, it's not as noticeable and a lot more of the open fundamental tone gets carried out into the hall. Um, however, it should also be noted that if you're playing the marimba, even at a big concert hall, you as the performer, you're going to hear more of the attack and more of the overtone than somebody who's maybe like 50 yards out. And that's why a lot of snare drummers, they have a little bit of ring in their snare drum that will help push the sound through an ensemble and push it out into the hall. And while they can hear it, the people out in the audience, they're just completely unaware. Now the temperature, this affects the pitch of the bar relative to the resonators. Um, so basically at the factory, these two are matched to each other at a temperature of 72 degrees. But when you get too much higher or lower in temperature than that, then um, the, the wood and the, and the bar and the, and the metal and the resonator, they, they don't expand and contract at the same rate. And then you compound that with the fact that the speed of sound uh, changes with temperature. And so if these two are unaligned, then your sound is going to be choked or the envelope of the sound is, is just going to be a little strange in comparison to ideal playing conditions. Number two, the marimba. Uh, bar material can have a huge impact on the sound, but I'm not going to cover that here. I really only play on rosewood marimbas. There's some great synthetic stuff out there, and maybe we can cover that in another episode. But today, I'm just going to be assuming that we're, we're, we're talking about concert quality rosewood marimbas. Okay, the bar dimensions and tuning, and the resonator dimensions and tuning, um, these are very much a product of what brand we're talking about, because everybody has their own patents, and these things do have an effect on the sound. Uh, I think it's relatively small in comparison to some of the other variables, but they are definitely a significant factor. Where the bar is struck. Okay, so here we have four basic playing positions. We have the center, we have off-center, we have the node, and we have the edge. Here's a video of me demonstrating these four zones. All right, to illustrate the playing zones on each bar, I'm going to be using my Malatek GS13, and I'll be recording it with my Sony PCMD50. This will give us some really high quality audio. Unfortunately, it gets compressed when you upload to YouTube. So I'll take the files from this and post it on marimbology.com for all you audio files out there. Okay, something I didn't talk about in the video is what I like to call the adjusted off-center position. And this is basically um, when, when you have to play on the edge of one bar and off-center on another, depending on the brand of marimba that you're playing, that sound could be very similar or very different. Uh, like I know on Yamaha marimbas, the distance between the node and the edge of the bar is really big. So when you're playing on the edge, 
it pretty much sounds like you're playing right off center. But on other marimbas, that distance is a little shorter. So if you want to get the sounds to match up a little bit more, I, I like to go to what's called the adjusted off center position, which is where you move the off center mallet even more off center, maybe halfway between the center and the node, and that sound will match the edge sound just a little bit better. Number four, how the bar is struck. Obviously the biggest factor is velocity because that's going to affect the volume of your stroke and it'll also affect the tone quality. For example, uh, human hearing, we hear uh, low, low volume tones differently than high volume tones. And also we have what's called multi-tambral mallets. So if you have a really loose mallet wrap, then when you're playing at a low velocity, you have a very smooth sounding hit. And then when you start playing at a higher velocity, it'll cut through to the core and you'll get more of a harsh sounding hit. The angle of the mallet to the bar. This affects how the, the force is dispersed into the bar. Um, so a lot of people, when they want to fade out or get kind of like a muddy sound when they're rolling, they will take their hand and elevate it so that the mallet shaft is at a more sharp angle to the bar. And that will kind of uh, take some of the force and kind of uh, reflect it back into the hand and it will take some of the force and cause the mallet head to slide a little bit on the bar and it will take a little bit of the edge off the sound. And depending on your mallet head shape, doing this can alter how much of your mallet head is in contact with the bar, which will in turn also affect the sound. Okay, number three, stroke type. This has been uh, kind of a controversy, but we have a few really good scientific studies that have come out recently that kind of put some myths here to rest. So I'm just going to talk about a few basic kinds of stroke strokes. I'm going to talk about the upstroke, also known as the piston stroke, which is where you take the mallet at an elevated position, you hit the bar, and then you come right back up to that same position. And then we have the downstroke, commonly used on a snare drum, which is where you take the mallet in an up position, and then you throw it down to the mallet, it rebounds maybe an inch, and then you stop. That's called a downstroke. Um, now, a lot of people think that these change the sound of the marimba, you know, if you use one versus the other, but I'm not entirely convinced. So let's take a little quiz. I have a video prepared in which I'm going to play 10 strokes. Some of them will be up, some of them will be down. In fact, if you'd like, go ahead and pause the video and get a you know, scratch piece of paper and a pencil and see if you can tell which ones are upstrokes and which ones are downstrokes. And then I'll play the answers for you. So as you can see, they're not really much different. I mean, unless you sort, scored a 90 or 100%, then you probably couldn't tell the difference. Most people are going to be between 40 and 60% on that, which is the equivalent of guessing. So there's not really a difference. However, it should be noted that the audience sometimes will perceive a difference visually. Uh, for example, if you play a short detached stroke, then the audience may perceive the sound as being shorter, even though it isn't. They're going to see that, and it's said that people hear with their eyes, and a lot of times that's true with the audience. So I'm not saying these are irre irrelevant per se, I'm just saying they don't have an effect on the tone. Now we can also say the same about long gestures and short gestures, which I'm not going to talk about here, but if you want to know more about those, you can go over to Mike Schultz's website, where he has his doctoral work on this posted, and he has lots of videos and audio files you can listen to that'll show you what he found on that. And, and basically what he found is that these strokes are acoustically irrelevant. However, perceptually, they are very important. Because like I said, people hear with their eyes, and if they see something that looks like it's short, then they're going to think this sounds short. Moving on. What is striking the bar? 